I wanted to uh, talk today about the dark side of Scientology. There is a morbid um, dark aspect of Scientology that not a lot of people talk about. And um, it's basically the idea that you pull things in. Um, that's the way they refer to it. That's the lingo that you will hear Scientologists use. He pulled it in. And what that means is that if something bad happens to someone, it's their own fault. Um, it doesn't matter under what circumstances. It doesn't matter if you were raped. It doesn't matter if you were murdered. It doesn't matter if you were born with a deformity or if you were born mentally ill or mentally challenged or you have ADD or any... or. Um, any of those uh, delayed, what is it called, delayed development, anything like that, it's all your fault. Um, whether it was stuff you did in a previous life, stuff you did um, in this life, it doesn't matter. And anytime something bad happens to a Scientologist, they are forced to confess their crimes. Um, that's the requirement. It, the only reason something bad happens to you is because you've done something bad. So it's this idea of karma, but it's turned to be such a, an evil insidious thing um i experienced that myself uh you know whenever something bad would happen to me whether i was in the sea org or not in the sea org of course it's much worse because they're a lot more heavily indoctrinated but anytime something bad would happen to me or i would get sick um, my parents would want me to do this indoctrination i mean this um confession I mean it was uh you have to sit down and write down all the bad things that you've done and then you have to sit down on their little lie detector thing called the e-meter and they have to ask you if you've written down everything if it's true if uh, all that good stuff to make sure that you're not lying and that you're not hiding anything it's just it's it's um it's crazy and this is a dehumanizing aspect of Scientology that really serves to separate a Scientologist from the outside world. Um, it makes them afraid of the outside world because if you do anything or get involved with anyone bad, then people are going to come after you or you, you turn into this paranoid individual. And it's, it's kind of hard to explain without really explaining the entire mindset of a Scientologist. Um, everything kind of coalesces into one giant piece, but this is by far the darkest part of it people are they look down upon anyone that has anything bad happen to them Scientologists do um, people that are not Scientologists are already looked down upon but if you are not a Scientologist and you have a deformity or you have a chronic illness such as cancer or anything like that um, it's assumed that you pulled it in that it's your own fault that you have cancer it's not because of genetics it's not because of uh, exposure to radiation or anything like that it's because you did something bad and now that makes a Scientologist feel better than you it's uh, it's what makes separating families so easy because someone like me for example the only reason I'm speaking out against Scientology in the eyes of a Scientologist is because I'm evil and I've done something bad and um, they, this is why you hear them talking about what are your crimes, what are your crimes. I mean, that's been a meme in the anti-Scientology world where uh, I think Jenna Elfman accused someone of raping a baby or something like that. Um, I'll see if I can find the link and include it in the description on the video. But um, this is where that idea comes from because anytime someone says something bad about Scientology it's because they've done something bad anytime someone has cancer it's because they've done something bad there's no compassion from a Scientologist to their fellow humans because that person probably deserved cancer that person probably deserved to be born deformed or mentally challenged that person probably deserves their mental illness that's really the way a Scientologist feels and this is really a dark side of uh, Scientology that ex-Scientologists I don't even think like to talk about because it was the thing that damaged us so, so much. Um, this constant idea that we weren't good enough and you obviously can't stop bad things from happening to you. Bad things happen to good people all the time just like good things happen to bad people. It's uh, just a fact of life and y you can do your best to prepare for them but you can't stop them from happening. They're gonna happen and uh, you aren't always going to be prepared either. Sometimes it just happens at the wrong wrong damn time. I mean, I'm sure we've all experienced that. But in Scientology, there's no such thing because Scientologists are expected to be perfect. And in the Sea Org, it's even more so. You're expected to be even more perfect, which is 
part of the heavy indoctrination that I suffered. Um, that is the heaviest indoctrination I suffered is this idea that I was supposed to be perfect. Um, when you are in, everything in Scientology is measured by statistics, uh, L. Ron Hubbard's version of statistics, which is you track the products that you create. So if you're writing letters, you know, you're supposed to write 100 letters a week. Well, the following week, you're required to write 101 letters. Otherwise, there's something wrong with you because your stat didn't go up. Um, now, people that have worked in the real world uh, know that you can only do so much in a given work week. So you have 40 hours a week. You can produce as much as you can produce in that 40 hours. And in order to produce more, you have to work overtime or you have to hire someone else. Scientology does not think this way. You are constantly expected to have your stat, which is short for statistic, up every week. Um, regardless of how many hour, um, regardless of how much you can do in a set amount of hours, you're supposed to figure out a way to make it happen. And this is another dark part of Scientology, which is called make it go right. Um, make it go right is basically a saying, which is I told you to do something and you need to get it done. This is the um, this if you tie it together with the idea of the greatest good for the greatest number, which is another Scientology thing. Um, is what justifies the things that they do that normal people see as bad. Um, the things like suing people into bankruptcy who don't deserve it, trying to frame, um, trying to frame people with uh, who wrote books on Scientology for bomb threats. I mean, I don't know if you heard about that. There's all kinds of things that the Church of Scientology has done uh, in the name of Scientology, in the name of the greater good, in the name of making it go right that would make a normal person cringe but you learn to just overlook those things when you're because you are dehumanized and the compassion is taken out of your life you're a shell of a human being that does that thinks eats sleeps Scientology all the time um, the entire cult is about nothing but money and greed um, and power that's really all it is um, it has even gone from because you used to give money for in exchange for counseling but now it's gone from that to just straight fundraising they don't even want to give counseling to people anymore um, it's really a terrible terrible thing um, it scrapes the life out of people um, it turns you into a like a, like the body snatchers you know you're there, but you have had your personality replaced with Scientology. My native personality has just become, begun to come back to me recently, and I'm starting to find that certain things which I thought were attractive while I was a Scientologist, I'm not really that interested in anymore. And it's really strange because it's things that you wouldn't think are connected to Scientology at all, but it's just the whole persona that I had created um, to be a good Scientologist. Um, that's what it had done to me. I mean, it had changed my basic values, my core values as a human being. And um, I'm just now finding that they come, they're come, they coming back. Um, you see Scientology with all these fundraisers and going out to help people. And th like in Haiti, for example, or um, they were even, they even, they were screaming to the high heavens about how they were around at 9-11, helping out firefighters and whatnot. Um, let me tell you something about Scientology. There is a thing called the doctrine of exchange in Scientology, which means that you don't give something for nothing, which means that you don't give charity to the poor. It really does mean that. Scientology does not give charity to the poor. They provide help through these social betterment programs, um, which are really just front groups, which are trying to recruit new Scientologists. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I'm sure you've heard of some of them. Narconon, Criminon, Applied Scholastics. These are all different front groups for the Church of Scientology. They do not give something in exchange for nothing. They expect you to become a Scientologist. So anytime that a Scientologist or Scientology gives anyone anything, they expect something in return. And it never fails. That's just how they are. Um, so if you hear Scientology talking about their social betterment programs, it's not like Doctors Without Borders, it's not like the Red Cross, it's not like um, the Peace Corps, nothing like that, where they actually go out into the field and help people. They, have, they do these little things that Hubbard created that are like faith healing techniques. They don't cost anything, they're free, all you have to do is throw up some tents. But really Scientology does not want to help people for free. 
and that they do not want to give charity. They do not want to give food to the poor. They do not want to give money to the poor. They don't want to help anyone. So just keep that in mind when you're thinking about Scientology and when you read about Scientology PR. Um, Scientology is a dehumanizing religion or cult, I should say. I like to call it a cult. A lot of people don't. And I don't like to argue about semantics most of the time. But in this case, I will call them a cult. Um, so I hope this video was informative. Uh, you can also check out my blog post. And uh, that's at scientologyslavery.com, my nifty new domain name. All right. Thank you for your time.